Now at 11, calls for change get louder in the South Sound after a man died in police custody. The promise for an investigation from the state, while Tacoma's mayor demands action now. It has to stop. Seattle's mayor is taking tear gas out of the mix as demonstrations continue. The message from protesters as they march in Seattle streets an eighth straight day. And a new arrest in a Tacoma cold case. Tonight, one of the FBI's most wanted fugitives is finally behind bars. New tonight, Seattle police will no longer use tear gas during protests. Mayor Jenny Durkin made that announcement of a temporary stop earlier this evening after hearing recommendations from health officials and also police oversight groups. SPD Chief Carmen Best says only SWAT officers will be authorized to use tear gas, and it must be approved first. The ban is for 30 days, but City Council could propose making it permanent. Tonight, protests continue in Seattle, and this one in the Central District remained peaceful right through the night. Kyra 7's Deborah Horn is live right near, now near 23rd and Jackson. Deborah, this crowd considerably smaller than in the past couple of nights. Smaller, Monique, but no less passion. I have to tell you, we moved from 23rd and Jackson and came here to 11th and Pike because that group broke up, but as you can see, they are still busy at it here. In fact, it seems more like a party than a protest, but we see the signs, so we know that they are still protesting and declaring that Black Lives Matter. Now, we want to show you what was happening a little earlier this evening. After a long day of protesting, this group took to 23rd Avenue and marched north. They were led with no particular direction in mind, they said, just eager to continue using their voices to achieve racial justice. The crowd was a mixture of people who came here from around the Puget Sound. They passed a somber memorial to those who died at the hands of police across this country. Some say they were here tonight for the very first time. I, I woke up from a nap and heard Black Lives Matter, and I'm like, really, today? Thank you. <laughs> so I said I'll walk a block or two with y'all. But I, I'm, I'm, I feel I'm blessed, I'm happy, I'm grateful that finally I matter and my child matters and my community matters. It's just overwhelming support. Like, I'm glad to see all these people. I'm young and I feel like if everyone, you know, in my generation and the generation above just continues to use their voice, that we can really bring change. No, I have not been here before, but I've wanted to come to support Black Lives Matter because we all know that there's injustice and un, like inequality throughout this society. In fact, this was a scene earlier today, speech after speech, entertainment too, in the parking lot at 23rd and Jackson. They say they do have specific demands. They want underutilized public land and the buildings repurposed and given over to black-led organizations for use as community centers and to provide affordable housing. They also want the Seattle Police Department to be defunded, they say, something Mayor Jenny Durkin says will not happen. Well, back here live now at 11th and the East Pike. Well, it looked like much of the protesting was ending for the night, but it does appear that it will go on into the night. I did see some police officers on the other side of this group. We're not that far from the East Precinct. That has been a target of the protesters throughout this very long week. But we don't know what time this will end, but we do know one thing that is certain, and that is that there will be many more press protests I can still talk. There'll be many more protests over the weekend. For now, reporting live on Capitol Hill, Deborah Horn, Cairo 7 News. Deborah, they are having an impact. Bellevue police will no longer use neck restraints in most situations. Today, the police chief announced the move is prohibited, except when the officer's life is in danger. This policy change comes after protesters marched through the city streets this week, calling for change. Now, Minneapolis is also approving changes to its policing policies after the outcry over George Floyd's death. Today, the city banned police from using chokeholds and neck restraints as well. Bystanding officers are also now required to intervene, regardless of tenure or rank. People protesting at the site where Floyd died say that's not enough. Having an interaction with the police officers is not really about the ticket. It's not about the fine. It's about the repercussions of be being in custody and are we going to be able to see another day. We're here because George is dead. And we're here because his family has called on us to act bravely. 
The city's mayor directed the policing changes to take effect immediately. He and the city council say they will continue to work to identify even more reforms. Well, tonight there are, are new calls for justice in the South Sound over the death of Manny Ellis. Today, Governor Jay Inslee says he will order an independent review of Ellis's death. And this comes after cell phone video released yesterday showed part of the deadly confrontation. And the governor says he does not want it to stop with this case. He is working on creating a permanent process to independently review deaths in police custody. Now, emotional crowds gathered for the same reason their mayor spoke out again tonight in Tacoma. And Gary, the mayor and her police department have very strong disagreements. They are truly at loggerheads. The union representing uh, the police officers here in Tacoma finds the mayor's comments reckless and outrageous. But the mayor told me tonight she is convinced from what she knows right now, the officers involved in Manny Ellis's death should still be fired. Take a look at some very controversial video she reacted emotionally to. This is cell phone video taken from the night in March 3rd, showing just a few dramatic seconds of Tacoma police taking Ellis down hard to the side of the road, and an officer appears to punch him several times in the head. Now, 33-year-old Manny Ellis died a few minutes later where he lay right there on the road from the lack of oxygen due to restraint, according to the Pierce County Medical Examiner, and they ruled his death a homicide. Now, earlier tonight, Tacoma's mayor openly demanded every piece of evidence and the officers be made public by investigators immediately, and she says Tacoma will be a shining national example of reform. Manuel Ellis and too many other black lives have been lost, and we must step up to meet the challenge. I will say it again and every day here forward. It has to stop. It has to stop. Now, the mayor clearly doubled down on those statements from her very emotional comments last night. She has already directed the city manager to, in fact, fire those four officers. That directive also requires Pierce County Sheriff's investigators to turn over all of their documents, all of their findings, all of their evidence directly to that city manager. Now, we should know in about a week if the four Tacoma officers will be charged by prosecutors or not. Meanwhile, the Pierce County a prosecutor is also at very strong odds with Governor Inslee because of his decision to honor the mayor of Tacoma's request to do a parallel separate investigation. He is not happy with that. He calls it, quote, a case of Monday morning quarterbacking situations. We'll keep you posted as this continuing uh, situation develops. We're live from the streets of Tacoma tonight. I'm Gary Horker, Cairo 7 News. <laughs> The sounds of horns and cheers echoed in downtown Redmond as demonstrators held a stand in solidarity rally this afternoon. Among those who spoke during today's event were local community leaders as well as Representative Susan Del Bene. She underscored the importance of taking a stand in the face of injustice. Dr. King talked about the appalling silence of the good people. So many people who saw injustice in our country and have not stood up. So we are here to speak out to stand up to make sure our voices are heard. Representative Del Beni says she is working on legislation to help address and fight systemic racism. Expect details, she says, next week. We are committed to bringing you every update on the protests and issues raised in the wake of George Floyd's killing. And you can also get updates all the time by downloading the Cairo 7 News app. Well, developing tonight, one of the FBI's most wanted fugitives tied to a Tacoma cold case is now in custody. Santiago Medeiros was one of the accused gunmen suspected in killing Camille Love more than a decade ago. Love was shot and killed while riding with her brother in February of 2010 in what is described as a case of mistaken identity between two rival gangs. Only Cairo 7 spoke to Love's family tonight who described the moment they learned about that arrest. It's the last thing I would have ever expected to hear today. Um, but it is one of the most exciting things that I could hear. Uh, it's like I think people say it's the sometimes unexpected news is the best news. I don't know. If they don't, I just made it up, I guess. No, and that's how I felt too when he called me. 
and he had he told me and it was just like i couldn't do anything but just cry hopefully a little bit of peace for that family tonight well, Medeiros was taken into custody in Mexico. He's now behind bars in Los Angeles and will be extradited to Tacoma to be tried in a Pierce County courtroom. Next to 11 illegal robocalls, dialing numbers right here in Washington. Usually I get five to 10, sometimes 15 a day. Tonight, Cairo 7's Jesse Jones has the fallout from a lawsuit filed last year to try to stop the millions of calls. Plus, the changes restaurants are now rolling out in the North Sound as they move into the next phase of reopening. A few showers out there tonight, but the chance of thunderstorms over the weekend on timing out when they're most likely to occur. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and we're bringing you a very special version of Local Steals and Deals, shining a spotlight on outstanding companies and their passionate founders. Small businesses are the backbone of America, and it is more important than ever that they thrive now. In this special version of Local Steals and Deals, we are bringing you exclusives to make your life safer, brighter, and more fun. Join us in making a difference. Simply text USA to 65000 to learn more. Two laid off workers now want the state Supreme Court to help get their unemployment checks and as soon as possible. Cairo 7 has reported that the state delayed sending out tens of thousands of unemployment checks after scammers stole up to $650 million. Now lawyers for two laid off workers filed a petition this afternoon demanding payments be sent out as soon as possible. Now to our state's coronavirus recovery effort. Today, UW Medicine reported the lowest number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients since the pandemic began. There are fewer than 20 patients across the entire UW Medicine system. Today, the state approved more counties to move to their next phase of reopening. King County is moving into a modified phase one, leaving just five counties in regular phase one. Pierce, Snohomish, Skagit, Whatcom, Okanagan and Clark counties go to the go, got the go ahead for phase two, joining 20 other counties. And the eight counties in green there got approved to move to phase three. Now, when phase two for Snohomish County was announced at 10 o'clock this morning, it sparked a mad dash by business and restaurant owners. All have been chomping at the bit to finally open their doors and welcome customers again. By noon, a Cairo 7 crew spotted several people already dining al fresco in Edmonds.
I'm like, oh wow, are they going to open it up to people for more people to even sit? So that's great. It's exciting. Very exciting. Now, as part of the changes, restaurants must be at half capacity. Tables must be six feet apart, and no more than five people are allowed at a single table. As for shops, they're allowed to reopen at 30% capacity. Now, tomorrow, Pacific Place will reopen for business in downtown Seattle. It is boarded up tonight, but changes are taking place inside. The shopping center says it will have signs up to encourage social distancing and remind people to wear masks. And shoppers will notice common seating areas will be be temporarily closed. Pacific Place is also increasing cleaning and disinfection of high touch areas like door handles, handrails, and restrooms. Well, today, Seattle started a new free coronavirus testing program. The testing kicked off at a site in Soto and will be available at an Aurora Avenue location. That starts on Monday. We have information on how to register for a test on our website, Kairo7.com. If you are tired of getting robocalls, listen up. Two air duct companies made over 13 million calls to Washingtonians just over two years. A lawsuit was filed by Attorney General Bob Ferguson last year. And Jesse Jones broke the story then, and tonight he covers the fallout. What do you call getting robocalls from an air duct company? A time suck. They usually I get five to 10, sometimes 15 a day. And now a King County judge has ruled that two air duct companies made more than 13 million robocalls to a million Washingtonians. Attorney General Bob Ferguson filed the case last September. This is unusual to have this sheer volume. We had some individuals receive close to 200 phone calls uh, from these entities. And look, that's, uh, that's problematic on many levels. The court documents say the companies, US Air Ducts and Sky Builders and DLM Services used a robocalling service to contact those on the do not call list. And the company was changing the ID numbers of those illegal calls. They're based out of Vancouver. They could make it look like a local call in, for example, Snohomish County. So not only do they engage in robocalls, which is unlawful, they actually made it look like their calls were sometimes coming from your neighborhood and that's illegal to do as well. We first told you this story in 2019. Documents we obtained showed that some Washingtonians received more than 100 calls. Elaine Godbout received 133 of them. When we spoke to him, he was happy about the court proceedings. I'm very, very glad about, about that. that. That's for sure. Remember, there are federal robocall laws and Washington has one too. So if you dial someone up without their permission, using an automated system for a commercial purpose, you're violating that state law. Now. Restitution and penalties will be determined in another judicial proceeding. However, if you do get a robocall, contact the FCC, the FTC, and the Attorney General's office. In Seattle, Jesse Jones, Cairo 7 News. Well, we asked the air duct companies for a response, and their attorney said, whether right or wrong, the AG put these companies, who had likely upwards of 10,000 satisfied customers, out of business based on an asserted dozens of complaints. It only filed 10 declarations from consumers to support all its claims. In campaign 2020, Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden formally clinched the presidential nomination tonight. It was more of a formality, really, but, officials, but it officially sets the former vice president up to face President Donald Trump in November. Now, Biden received the more than 1,900 delegates needed to become the nominee after this past Tuesday's primaries in seven states and the District of Columbia. On the Republican front, the Republican National Committee is giving North Carolina's governor till tomorrow to drop size restrictions on the convention set for Charlotte. The concern is the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the RNC is reportedly making contingency plans for the August event. A lot of clouds out there tonight, uh, presenting us with some rain, some occasional thunderstorms, a lot of lightning in parts of King County, also the northern parts of the uh, Kitsap Peninsula, parts of the Eastern Olympic Peninsula earlier this evening. Those thunderstorms just about gone as we take a look at Painfield and Everett on this Friday afternoon, Friday evening. A lot of interesting cloud motion. We get that this time of year when we have, well, competing air masses. We might have one cloud layer going pretty fast and then another one going a slightly different direction, being directed by our mountains. So we get some 
some pretty turbulent cloud motions, and we definitely had that this evening. Now, some areas of rain uh, just off of Port Ludlow and off the southern tip of Whidbey Island. Some heavier rain, well, starting to come across the southern tip of Whidbey, heading toward Everett. This is all fading away. Although parts of Snohomish and Skagit counties will still have some pockets of rain for the next, uh, say, hour to hour and a half. And we could, we could definitely have a shot at rain early tomorrow morning in many spots in the North Sound. Much better chance in the South Sound to begin Saturday. So a few showers into your day Saturday. Pinpoint meteorologist Claire Anderson will have the very latest from 7 a.m. for your Saturday. Afternoon areas of rain and, yes, the possibility of a few thunderstorms with some lightning strikes possible. I'm not expecting extreme amounts of lightning, no repeat of what we had last Saturday where we had tens of thousands of lightning strikes in the cloud and cloud to ground. We won't have that tomorrow, but the possibility is there, especially tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow morning, a few spotty showers. Notice by noon, mainly green here on the map, but let's go later into the afternoon. Pockets of yellow and orange. That gives us that potential for some thunderstorms. South Sound mainly favored, but any of us could have a thunderstorm tomorrow afternoon. On Sunday, a lesser chance of thunderstorms. Monday, a little drier, but we stay a little on the wet side. Pretty drippy through the week with temperatures in the 60s. Monique? Pretty drippy. Okay, thank you, Morgan. Yeah. A step closer to restarting games. The new guidance today to get professional sports back on the field. I'm Lisa Robertson, and we're launching a special version of Local Steals and Deals, shining a spotlight on small businesses. They're the backbone of America, and we need them to thrive now more than ever. Join us in making a difference. Text USA to 65000 to learn more. A stunning admission by the NFL, difficult to imagine happening without the protests across the country this week. We, the National Football League, admit we were wrong for not listening to NFL players earlier and encourage all to speak out and peacefully protest. We, the National Football League, believe black lives matter. I personally protest with you and want to be part of the much needed change in this country. 
That message is in stark contrast to how the league responded when players took a knee in recent seasons to highlight social injustice. Some owners had in place penalties for those who protested during the national anthem, but now that has all changed as we move forward from here. And today, the governor opened the door for professional sports to get going again, lifting training and practice restrictions statewide. Cairo 7 Sports Director Chris Francis reports it does not mean they have free reign. Well, it's great news for sports teams, but all of these new guidelines are subject to the rules and regulations of each respective league. They have been working hard to put in rules that make their players and their coaches safe. But it does help teams get back on the field right here at home, and it also is one step closer to playing games. The lifting of more restrictions today by Governor Inslee means the Sounders can go from two players kicking a ball back and forth to full team training. I know the players are excited to get back out and, and compete with each other and um, compete against one another and just have games to look forward to. They will still follow protocols, but the squad will ramp up for their tournament in Orlando at the end of the month. All the testing, uh, protocols, everything that needs to be there to have Orlando be a safe space. I think they've thought of uh, pretty much everything. Inslee also announced that sports office personnel can return, which clears the way for Pete Carroll and his staff to get back to the VMAC as long as the number of people doesn't exceed 50. As far as practicing, the Seahawks will have to wait. The NFL has said they want all 32 teams to start at the same time. That's already the case for MLS, even if the Sounders had to wait a little bit. I've been really proud to live in Washington throughout this crisis when I look at the reliance on data and on science and on objective measurements. You know, that's how we try to run our club uh, based on objective evidence. I feel like the governor and the mayor and the county executive are trying to do the same thing. But there is still a ban on fan attendance, which will hurt revenue. Fortunately, we've had months to plan contingencies for all this stuff. And, you know, we'll, we'll do whatever we can to try to get back and plan some soccer in front of our fans, even if it's, even if it's just on TV. Inslee's office also released guidelines for youth sports and how they get back on the field. But those are going to have to wait until each county, your respective county, is in phase two. And as we've been telling you, King County is still in a modified phase one. Chris Francis, Cairo 7 News. All right, check this out. Drone video from Duval shows what looks like school buses just pulling into a parking lot. But the drivers behind the wheels, they actually have a message. Look at this. Uh, they're slowly forming a tribute to the graduating class of Cedar Crest High School by spelling out, there it is, 2020. And the drivers even get out and form a heart at the bottom of the exclamation point there. And that is taking this year's graduation tributes into overdrive. Congratulations, class of 2020. Know more about the day's biggest stories. Cairo 7 News, 5 to 630.
Here is another salute to seniors. Former President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle will headline a star-studded tribute to the class of 2020. It is part of a YouTube virtual graduation ceremony tomorrow. Taylor Swift, Beyonce, and other stars will join the stream, which starts at noon our time. And for Morgan, I'm Monique Minglavin. We want to congratulate you, class of 2020. Have a great weekend. Cairo 7 News is live, local, in-depth, 24-7. Log on to Cairo7.com and download the Cairo 7 News and Weather apps.